Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Welcome to today's edition of Helping Seniors Television from the Helping Seniors Network. Whether you are caring for a senior, are a senior, or just plan to be one, we hope you'll enjoy today's program. A great insight into printing and direct mail options. Everything to know for helping your business or your non-for-profit or even your monthly lunch club with Brian Burkholz of Allegra Printing as he visits with Helping Senior TV host and longtime senior advocate Joe Steckler on today's edition of Helping Seniors TV. Welcome to this edition of Helping Seniors. My panelist today is uh, Brian Burkholz, and Brian is the owner of Allegra Printing. And welcome, Brian. Thank you very much, Joe. You know, I appreciate you know, it. You know, our, our viewers might under might wonder why I uh, felt that we should do this show on professional printing services. And I can very quickly tell you, viewer, that the person sitting here with me has been a very, very special person to help seniors over the course of time that I've, I've known the man. He has uh, stepped up to the plate like a lot of other businesses do in all communities to help causes. And the cause of seniors in Rivera County is extremely important because we have, Brian, over 245,000 people that meet senior citizen status under the AARP. And we actually have uh, roughly 23% of our county of 545,000 people is over the age of 65, which, which certainly says that we're a, we're a senior community. Certainly And are. seniors use printing services. Seniors don't realize <laughs> how, how much they do use senior printing services. But in a case of, of Brian, folks, Brian has a, has a couple of personal interest stories that he can tell that I think that a lot of times when we do our TV shows, we we try to get our viewers to connect with our panelists and to understand why it's so important that they understand what it is we're doing. And in your case, um, I think it goes back to your family connection, right? It's gone back three generations of family that I was lucky enough to have uh, last well into their 90s, which has all of its associated problems. So. So what did you find, Brian, when you started to look into care for your parents? What did you find was available or how did you go about finding it? Unfortunately, um, being remote, my parents are in Jacksonville. So trying to find help for my father, help for my mother, who was caring for my father while he was in hospice and going through that process was quite difficult. There was no one place that I could go to. Um, I did have some luck that my sister worked at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, but uh, even even that didn't solve all the problems that we had. Yeah. See, one of the things we're trying to do, Brian, and we want to do it years ago, and uh, our viewers don't know this, but you know, helping seniors is 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 a program designed to inform, educate, and connect seniors and those that care for seniors to resources in their local community, but. Many years ago, in fact, it was 25 years ago that I helped start a program that uh, a national insurer wanted to see what it could do about establishing a network across the United States where a person could make a phone call and get help in any community. At the time, I was involved with the National Federation of Interfaith Volunteer Caregivers. There were over 2,000 of these organizations in the United States started by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. So we just sort of piggybacked on those organizations. And since I had the, uh, I had a director of all those organizations, uh, if people called us, and it, it was, chances were pretty good. I could get them to a volunteer program in a city. There were, with 2,000 being in there, we could just about cover the United States. And we were able to do that. And we saw 
how many new doors were opened for people that had nowhere to go. But in order to make these things happen, local businesses have to be involved and help doing it. And that's what you've done. So what does a professional printer do? What do you do, Brian? What do you do at Allegra? How do you, how do you make this thing work? Well, I'm lucky enough to surround myself with about 14 different tradesmen that are all very professional at what they do. And each one knows a different type of the area of printing that they're responsible for. It could be foil imprinting. It could be offset printing, which is the old fashioned way of making plates and transferring it onto right. a roller and then onto paper. This is wet ink, not the, uh, the dry toner that we have today in most of the printers that are sitting at home. Um, I have people that do mailing services. I have people doing fulfillment services. I have people that are responsible. The one guy's only responsibility is making the plates for the presses. So there's, uh, it's a professional print shop surrounds themselves with a, a, a yeah. variety of print, of very professional people. Yep. You know, I taught a fundraising course many years ago at, at, at one of the, uh, National Federation of Interfaith Volunteer Caregiver Summer Camps, and there were roughly uh, 900 or 1,000 people there. And I had about 500 in this class for, for a two-day session on uh, fundraising. And one of the things I talked about was, was professional printing and how um, we don't realize that we can go to a, a printer like you, like, say, a church, or a private nonprofit group, or a small organization that, uh, say a family's been, uh, had a, a devastating moment, and a group of neighbors want to get together to help that family, and they try to raise money. They, they don't know where to go, but they can go, if they go to somebody like you, tell our viewer how you can take a simple letter and what you can do with that letter, and without anybody else having to do a, a blessed thing. Tell, tell them what they can do. Well, it's, uh, it's very interesting with process like that. You have all sorts of pieces that come together for people who are grieving or are trying to support a, another person. Uh, it may be something as simple as just a prayer card. And I, I'll put together a prayer card that has a picture of somebody and a prayer on the back. And I can make hundreds or even thousands of copies of that without having to, to reset the printer the way you would at home. Um, but if somebody wanted to send a letter to a group of people trying to drive fundraising, they could bring to me the letter. I could print the letter. I could put a signature on the letter through a graphic artist. I can fold the letter and stuff it into an envelope and then mail it with a barcode on it that would allow it to be uh, processed by the, the post office for a very inexpensive rate and sent out to... Uh, the biggest I've done is 120,000 people. The smallest I've done is 210. You can do whatever you want. The, the scope is, is only limited by your imagination and what your budget is for, for postage. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to hold you in. A lot of people ask me, well, Joe, how do, you, how do you keep track of all the money you're spending? I said, it's pretty easy, really. You know what your budget is. You know what you can spend. You know what you like coming in. And I can manage this thing with a computer I hold in my hand. I can, I can I, as long as I know how much money I've got coming in, and I know what I'm going to spend, I know whether I'm going to be on the positive or the negative side. The same thing, a good printer. A ball, but just, let's say that somebody brought you a letter, and they wanted it to go, they wanted to try a 15,000, well, let's, let's say 10,000, because that's easier for you to do real quick. If they brought you a letter, and they were gonna, you were going to print a letter, put the signature on it, fold it, put it in an envelope, and then put the barcode thing on it, and then you have a way to buy uh, a certain mix in the community where you can send a letter to, right? Right. I, I can get a, little, a list where it's, it's detailed by age, by geographic area, by zip code, um, by, by religion, by sex, by... Whatever case may be, I can dice it and slice it and buy the list of just the people that you want and then mail that letter for you. And the price is very inexpensive. I always say, if you look at the price of postage, is going to be about 29 cents 
And it's not gonna be the 49 cents that you pay the post office, it'll be about 29 cents. If you look at 29 cents, that will be the biggest part of the job. It will be more expensive than the printing and the envelope and the stuffing and the list cost. So let's say they could probably send a letter to 10,000 people, uh, 10,000 times four, what? $4,000. It'd be four thousand dollars. It would be about right because you're talking about twenty nine hundred dollars is for the postage, and uh, the uh, the letter and the envelopes would probably be right around eleven hundred. So you're talking four thousand dollars. So total cost to how much? About this ballpark. About four thousand dollars. About four thousand dollars. That's to ten thousand people. Ten thousand people. And if you, depending on what the cause is or what you're trying to do, if you if you guys say like a family that's uh, lost a child to a terrible illness, or a child that is, uh, or a senior that, 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 that needs tremendous amount of expensive help or anything like that, and people get together and say, I wanna do something to see if we can raise money. The chances are, just based on my own experience, the chances are, if you spend that, you get a group of people together and pay the $4,000, mail out 10,000 for certain type things, you'll recover that $4,000 very quickly. And in most experiences of people that I've known, including Joe, uh, I, I hear about the, the payback is usually two or three times, yes. So, but people, Brian, the average citizen doesn't stop to think what a, a professional printer can do for them in terms of, of making the project easier. They don't have to do anything except write a letter and say, what kind of people I want to reach. You can take it from there. Right. Where else can you go to get that done? Uh, there isn't really any other place. You sit That's... down with a graphic artist and it all takes place without you ever touching a piece of paper. That's that's the point. And it's just like we, 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 we've done a recent mailing for, uh, for we did a, we did a one uh, mail out for uh, uh, helping seniors last year where we had the Jaguar and you suggested that we put a picture of the car in there. I think that it was just, it was a very simple picture of the Jaguar in color, for color, and it, it, it was something like $100 for a whole stack of those things. Right. And we put those in each letter that we did and we mailed to uh, 2,000 people. And uh, the, the feedback I got from people was that Nobody's ever done this. <laughs> Nobody's ever put a picture of what the product is that they're trying to market to us right. for a nonprofit organization. As a result, more people were willing to be involved. So I think this is a, uh, a, a semblance of what a professional printer that you do uh, is to decide to compare what you can do as a, a with your type printing capability and as compared to a fast printer service and how you can help drive the cost down. Well, the biggest difference is a fast printer typically uses a piece of machinery that's very similar to what you have in your home. Um, uh, it's a, a little bit bigger scale, but you're using uh, toner or ink in a inkjet. An inkjet would spray the ink. A toner machine would lay down the ink and, and fuse it to the paper with heat. I'm, I'm printing things typically on a press, and when you were talking about the little insert with the Jaguar on it, I can print 30 of those things at a time on one piece of paper. So when I'm printing multiple pieces of paper and then shopping them up, the price goes down, 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 and down. Uh, a, a quick printer is going to have a, a maximum size of about 13 by 19, so he would be able to fit six at a time on a piece of paper of, of a insert. So he's not gonna be able to save the printing cost the way I do by printing more at one time and printing it at high speeds. My machines run six, 8,000 an hour. Uh, so six, 8,000 an hour times 30 per sheet and I'm, I'm saving money. <laughs> so what your big cost is, is, is set up. Right. Big cost is in setup. So if if, if people in the, in, the, in the non in the private sector are trying to raise funds or trying to help other people or trying to get a project going, uh, 
you can you can offset what the actual cost of it is by by going to a greater run on a machine and reaching a broader audience. Right. I get a lot of people that come in to me and say your prices are about the same as the quick printer because I only want a thousand. I said, well, yes, because doing a thousand, I'm doing it the same way as the guy down the street is doing it in a quick printing manner. So, but if I set the press up, it's very expensive to set it up. But once it's set up, it runs like the, sp the speed of sound almost. <laughs> and, and, and it looks good. Yeah, the, the quality uh, is perfect. The, uh, in fact, I'm going to ask somebody that's off, off, off stage now, how, how about, I'm just going to look away from the cameras. How about give me one of those posters so I can... So I can I can show the people on and the audience what we're talking about. We we always we can do, we can, we can do different things on our TV show. And here, are you giving giving me a a post? That's all right. We don't get to see the hands. This is an example, folks. You can see it of a of a poster that uh, Bryant recently printed for helping seniors. And this poster is uh, depicts a uh, car given to us. Okay. You want to see which camera you want? Which way? Can you see which way, Carrie? Which way? Is it good there? Yeah. Okay. You can see the quality of the. Of a, it makes the product look like something that people would want to make a donation for. This is going to be the um, the uh, fundraiser for the all for the uh, helping seniors for this coming year. It's a 1951 Ford Victoria that was given to us by uh, a car dealer, AJ Hires from Boniface Hires, and he gave us a car. When I say gave, means he gave it to us, no strings attached. <laughs> he said, with a stipulation, sell tickets to help people. Right. And Mr. Burkholz said, I want to help. And so he used his company to be part of a charity endeavor by giving us all the, the envelopes, the stationery, the the posters, the, the little inserts we put in there to see the car. But it all, it all is a community effort, Brian. And it goes back to what you said when we started the show about the fact that you got involved because you saw the difficult time you were having in helping care for your parents. Right. But I think it goes more than uh, than this because I think it's important that you explain to our viewers. I'm one of the questions I said here. How show how printers can help businesses, nonprofit organizations, and church, churches market through better visual displays, especially to the many seniors in Broward County. Churches advertise their programs for seniors. Uh, businesses advertise uh, long-term care insurance. You can do a fantastic job on posters large signs, banners. You can do all this, rack cars. People just don't realize, you know, you, you, can, you can get information out about your charity, about your church, but if they go to somebody like you who's got experience in doing this, you can help them with ideas on how to do it. You did that with me. Right, and I mean, you start off with, you start off with paper, you start off with envelopes, you start off with letterhead, then you move on to banners. And you have roll-up banners. You have banners that you put on the fence at a baseball game. Um, you put banners out that are temporary. You put the paper banners up that the kids run through at the football games. You can have your name on that. Um, if, you're, if you're a church group, uh, you want bulletins. You want the bulletins to look very nice. You want to have some advertising on the back of the bulletin to, to draw uh, attention into whichever area that you're looking for that week. Uh, it goes in different directions. Once we started putting ink on paper, printers started to think about what else we could put ink on. We can put ink on plastic screens and make them into roll-up uh, signs. We can put it on to plastic uh, uh, banners. We can put it on pens and pencils and coffee mugs. And, and but what's mugs. important is that a professional printer, Brian, can take something that can, could, generally speaking, look rather mundane, and by use of a little color or the way you magnify the or enlarge certain aspects of the sign you're trying to show will will increase 
the uh, productivity of that post are assigned by, by 95%. You know, we use really technical terms. We make it pop. Make it what? Pop. Really pop. 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 It's very technical. <laughs> that's, that's, that's printing terminology, huh? Pop, make it pop. Well, I usually hand it over to one of the two very talented uh, graphic artists, and they work their magic and, and take things from... Uh, take things from a, just a general picture of a car to a poster that has just gorgeous lettering and the, all of the, the pieces of the, the program that you want to sell. It, I guess, and I never think about this, you know, viewers watch this TV show, but you're, you're the owner of a business, and I've never really thought about what kind of an enjoyment the people that do the actual work get out of putting their time on a product that means something. And the reason I say that is because years ago when I was executive officer on a submarine tender, we were asked to make a retirement plaque for a Marine general. And I gave it to my pattern shop people and I asked them to, uh, to build a shadow box and, and put all these medals and everything in there. And I went down to see how I was coming along. And there were four or five guys around this big table, all just looking. I said, what are you guys looking at? And they said, XO, it means executive officer, that's what it was, a submarine tender. He said, XO, we've never seen anybody with this many medals. <laughs> he said, it's really an honor for us to be able to build the shadow box to honor this guy as he retired after something like 38 years of service in the Marine Corps. Right. So th these are things we don't think about when we talk about professional uh, service. Too often we just think about getting a plumber or an electrician and people, uh, printers, I think probably are the most often thought about thing with a printer is, is, is that the father of the bride-to-be thinks about what is the cost is going to be as he prints those invitations for his daughter's wedding he has to pay for it. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's fun, the, the, uh, the different projects you get to work on. Like you said, your, uh, your machine shop was working on the, uh, the job for the general. I get to work at least once a year on, on fundraisers for the Vietnam vets. Uh, once a year, at least, I get to work on something with you that has to do with seniors of Brevard. It might be next week, it's going to be somebody that's going to come in and talk to me about the Humane Society. But if there's, there's always somebody here in town that needs a little bit of something. And I imagine, I imagine it's hard to say no to, a, but you can't, you can't help everybody. And somebody said to me, well, Joe, how can you ask somebody to do something like that? I said, they, I said, all I can do is give them the information I want them to have, and then they have to make a decision if they want to be part of it or not. And I've never, in my whole time of fundraising, if I went to a business and asked them to help, they couldn't do it. I never got upset about that because I understood everybody asked them. I remember one time I asked a minister one time about something, and he right off the bat said, I, I can't do it. I said, before you give me an answer, I said, I want you to prayerfully reflect on what you just said. Two days later, he called me back and said, you can do it. <laughs> but it's just like asking people to do things, Brian. It's, uh, it's, you know, you get in. One of the things I think that professional printers bring to an audience that people like our viewers today will understand is when you're, talking about the appeal of printed products to purchase and the ultimate market. What has been your experience in, uh, and, and, and being able to develop a product that, that helps sell, sell the product? Yeah, and that's, that's where the bread and butter of our business is, is selling a product or maintaining a product. I probably sell more sales brochures, uh, pocket folders, uh, rack cards. Uh, every physician in, in this county has to have a rack card that goes into an associate's office. What is a rack card? It's, it's basically a, a three, I'm sorry, a four inch by nine inch card that looks like an oversized business card. And it is basically a business card that gives you all of the information of a particular doctor. 
Doctors use it very often. Businesses use it as well. If you go to the Chamber of Commerce, they have rack cards for all the different businesses that are members. But doctors you see every single day because you're going to a hospital. And while you're at the radiologist, you are having your knee x-rayed. Well, there's a rack card for the orthopedic surgeon. And if you're at the orthopedic surgeon's office, there's a rack card for the GP that's down the street. And so on, and, and that's how they get their name out there, is who associates with who in the business. Yeah, but the additional added benefit of using a rack card that comes from a professional printer as opposed to something you print on flimsy paper <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a copier is that that rack card is a lot harder to fold or fold up and put in your pocket. You got to keep it you got to keep it straight because it's it's not that bendable. So it's something okay. Here's a rack card. Here's one he did. Here's a rack card. And you're right. If you if you do one on paper and you look at it at the uh, doctor's office, it'll be laying in the rack looking like that. Yeah. <laughs> if if I if I print it, it's going to be standing in the the rack looking like that. And the picture that you have on it. Usually, like I said, it's a, a doctor who's selling his services, but he also wants you to know what he looks like. So he's going to have his picture on there, and it's going to look gorgeous because I use the same technology as lithiographic printers have used for years to make our, our plates. And the plates will turn out a photo quality piece of work every single time. Okay. You know, we're just about out of time. A rack card also contains a lot of information about whatever it is that you're trying to promote. Right. And that's what's so important. It's about selling something. It's about selling it for money, selling it for information, selling it for education. Right. And you do a great job of that. If you want some money, what is your phone number at Allegra Printing? It's 632-7272. Here in town, we, uh, we've been using the same phone number for 35 years. Right, and that's, you, you, uh, you still use it. No, we're out of time. But I want to thank you, Brian, for being here. I've enjoyed doing the show with you, and I hope our viewers have gotten a little bit of information thank about you. what a professional printer can do. Appreciate thank it. You. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would have welcomed your call at 321-473 7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.